They're the custodian for all the documents. They're not the actual holder in due course, because we know that the certificate holders and the bond holders are. They're just the trustee. If you don't have that stamped assignment on there, it doesn't go anywhere else. And if you don't have an assignment showing that it goes to Deutsche Bank, you can't go any farther. You cannot foreclose. I stopped the foreclosure sale two weeks ago by faxing them four documents over to the trustee. And those four documents were assignments that were very similar to what I showed you. The customer called me back. He says, I don't know what you did, but it stopped. And not only stopped, canceled. I don't mean push back. Push back to me is terrorism. And I'll use John's terminology. You want to live like that, push back every 30 days, 30 days, 30 days, 30 days. People can't live like that. They thought when they made Windows 3 and they put Solitaire on it, <laughs> that the workforce would kind of slow down a little bit and everybody would be playing cards. I got news for you. The people out there today that are working or trying to work and have this 30-day window push back, push back, I don't think your productivity is too great today. Because all you're worried about right now is a roof over your head. Where's your productivity of what you do at your job? Doesn't anybody understand? Basic knowledge is productivity. Can't be pushed back. Okay. A couple more okay. questions? Yeah. Yeah, oh. now, what, what he was talking about, is that part of the securitization process? Yes, it is. That's what it is. Can you kind of just explain a little bit more about the securitization process? Sure. Because I think that's where we'll get the understanding, because we are already understand uh, what John's talked about sure. as far as the promissory note yeah. and the deed of trust. But the securitization process is what the pooling and servicing agreement exactly. is all about. Right. Correct. What happens is, is what I would do is, is I'd collect $5 billion dollars. And I'd issue our own private mortgage-backed security. And I would send it down to the trustee. The trustee would already have it sold. So when we made a loan, guess where the money came from? It didn't come from the bank. The bank never, made, never took a dime out of the bank. The bank didn't take one penny out of their coffers. We borrowed the money from the Federal Home Loan Bank Board. That's where we got the money. That's a nice word for up here in San Francisco where we were borrowing the money called the U.S. Treasury. We borrowed the money. We had that loan for three, maybe at most seven days. And then it was shipped to the trustee and then sold to suckers. You know why? Because we stamped everything and got the Moody's rating and S&P ratings to stamp them and certify them AAA. That's how you can sue, and that's why they are being sued. The fact is that they had to attest that they were AAA rated, the CEOs of these organizations. They have to attest to these. But if they are not triple rated and the default rate is much higher, that's why they're getting sued, and they're getting sued in class action suits. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bill, you had mentioned about a 10K form and an 8K, and an 8K form. What's Where the are the... No, not what's the difference, okay. but thanks for asking me that. Okay. Um, <laughs> where are those? Are those with the bank? Is that with the pooling and service agreement? Where are those forms normally? Where do you find those? They're with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Okay. And if you go on Edgar, if you can find it, oh, my gosh, sometimes I'm like 11, 12, 1 o'clock, you know, keep typing away, look, 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 look. It's, do you have a full-time job? You do, don't you? Yeah, I do. Okay. You have kids? Not at home. Okay. I was going to say, if you did, you'd never see them again. <laughs> okay. Because after you got home from work, then you'd be on there looking for these documents. Sure. It's not to say. Some of them aren't even filed. Okay. Okay? Some aren't filed. 
and you have to look elsewhere. Bloomberg, Reuters, Nexus, Lexus. You have to have subscriptions, and these subscriptions are like, uh, you know, two thousand dollars to get into their system to buy these things. And they basically tell who the investors are and how much they have invested into that. That's exactly right. The percentage of how much they have invested in. I, I've just been told from the back, I want to play this tape for you, and, and it's about five minutes long. And I'm going to give you the overview because um, the only person who has heard this tape is a gentleman by the name of Neil Garfield, for those of you who have heard him. He's a pretty good guy. He's getting up there in age. But he's a great guy. He actually uh, was at my house oh, about a month ago, uh, maybe a little bit more. But uh, we do meet. We have a group here in Arizona that meets with Neil once in a while, and we brainstorm things to try to get a better handle on what's going on around the country. He was very interested in this tape. He had heard it. But my bodyguard back there says, you have the most unbelievable power to keep somebody on the phone. I don't know how you can keep somebody talking. This is only five minutes. But how you can keep somebody talking on the phone for 45 minutes and it keeps giving you information after information and after information. And if you ever heard that one, the kicker would be the greatest thing in the world. It would be someone saying that they had uh, everything up to date and they don't. So don't believe everything you hear. You call nine times your master servicer, you're going to get 11 different answers. Okay, so don't believe. But this is a tape that was made and recorded. His name is Ronaldo Reyes. And he is the asset manager who forecloses on houses. And I am the dumb homeowner trying to get a modification. He doesn't know he's being recorded, but in the state of Arizona, again, I say, only one person has to be. So when you hear him say, well, you have to call this or you got to do this, this is going to be shocking and surprising. He represents Deutsche Bank. So go ahead. Maybe I have to play it through the mic. Oh. Call her back and tell her that your loan modification. Okay, let me, uh, this is a brand new iPhone 12 version and the only one that we use. <laughs> Should go back to there, but it's not going in there. Yeah, you had it before. Yeah. Okay. But why don't you want to hold the mic to it? I, I, you know, I don't know what to do now. It's, what, what do I do? Okay. What? So now, I, you know, I'm like, now what do I do? I called her. I got a voice message this morning, but this was late. What? And I, I, you know, I don't know what to do now. It's, what, what do I do? Okay. What I would suggest, Mr. McCaffrey,
sent the paperwork off to them, and uh, they don't have the paperwork. This is the third time I've sent it off. Okay. Then I would call her back and just explain to her that I'm trying to get my loan modification done. I've submitted my paperwork. I, you know, you want to know what that is, and do you have to resubmit the paperwork? Okay. Okay. I, I would just call her back. I mean, at least she called back, right? Yeah, she she called back. I mean, it's just a. Uh, but why would I say my mo my modification was denied? Well, because that was the in our first conversation. That's what you told me that they didn't approve the loan modification. That was the impression I had from you that you, your loan modification wasn't approved. But you but I think now you're telling me that it's really more a matter of paperwork. Yeah, well, what I'd asked you, I think, originally was, was my loan even modifiable? And you were going to get back with me or have somebody call me to see right. if, if it was modifiable, and I ha had not heard anything back. Okay, so I think the next step is really to just talk to them again and ask them what the status is. Okay. Okay, I, I would just call that person back. At least you have a direct person to talk to. Right. Yeah, I... I have a, a, a person directly to talk to, so should, um, so when I'm in this process, I mean, do I, is my, what about a, uh, is there a, uh, is my sale date then pushed back when I'm in the process? No, sir, I don't know, that's why you should, I was just calling her, um, I was just Gary. calling her right away. Okay. Okay. So... So Deutsche Bank is out of it completely? Yes, sir. Whenever you call me, I can at least let them, each time you've called me, I let them know to give you a call. So yeah. it's not a problem. But in terms of the decision, yes, it is their decision. That's okay. not what the pulling okay. and servicing agreement so it's says. their decision to either move ahead with the modification or not modify it and... That's right. Then is there any workout? Do they contact you at Deutsche? Not, not at all, sir. It's, it's, it's completely under their authority under the contract. Contract okay. meaning the so, pooling and servicing. So, well, this lady, agreement. when I had originally talked to her, said that Deutsche Bank, uh, they were the ones that owned my loan. No, y y that's true, sir. That that part is true, but it's um, think of it as we're a trustee. So it's you know we're simply. on behalf of investors, but the loan servicing portion under the contract, one West or IndyMac. Okay. But I can at least help you, you know, if you don't feel like you're getting the attention from one West, I can at least give them a call and say, you know, to give you a call back. Right. All right. So you're, so I guess what I'm trying to, trying to say is, is then you don't own the loan, so I really shouldn't be talking to you. No, sir. We own the loan. We own the loan, sir. Now they own but it. But the decision under the contract is the servicer's decision, one way. Okay. Okay. I, I know that sounds counterintuitive, but they think of it as um, we're an appointed trustee, but well, we're not a servicer. The servicing is done by one way. Okay. Okay. So you're just the, you own the loan on behalf of the trustees? We are the trustee. We own the, we own the loan on behalf of the trust. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So you own the loan on behalf of the trust. That's correct, sir. Okay. So should I contact her back and see what the, what the issue is? Yes, sir. That would be my suggestion. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, uh, Ronaldo, for calling me back. All right, Mr. McCaffrey, thank you. All right, bye-bye. That's good. Is he the trustee? Is he the owner? The contract that he's speaking of, he never mentions the word pulling and servicing agreement because he doesn't want you to know that. There is a contract. So is he the trustee on behalf of the certificate holders? He is. Does he have a right to foreclose on you? No. If he did, he would be violating what's called the REMIC status. And that is the sort of what's where I'm ending up here. REMIC meaning 
R-E-M-I-C, Real Estate Mortgage Investment Trust, 